Well, good evening. This is Dr. Bart Rademacher, Prescription for Your Transformation. Real people, real conversations, and real success. And so broadcasting live from uh, Tampa in Florida, um, very fortunate to be talking to someone on the West Coast, and that's why we're kind of late today. Um, but this is another exciting uh, perspective of what life is really all about. And it just seems that, you know, with the advance of, of information, with the advance of technology, uh, things just seem to get a lot more complicated. And as we get to enjoy all these incredible advances, you know, cell phones, and computers, and, and everything else out there, it's almost like by necessity, we have to make things more complex. And that's where we get lost. And so what we need to do, you know, to, we need to simply simplify our life. And the guest that I have tonight is, is an awesome person. Just really met her last night. Um, incredible background. Uh, grew up in New York and went to Australia and uh, being very influential. You know, to, we need to simply simplify your life. And the guest that I have tonight is, is an you awesome person. Turn that off. We met her last night. You need to turn um, that off. <laughs> incredible background. Uh, grew up. Can you turn that off? Awesome. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, well, here we go. That's the introduction. This is actually good healing. Um, a beautiful and amazing woman that I had the pleasure and delight to have a long conversation last night. It was only supposed to be about 10 minutes. And it turned out to be a whole hour where we solved all the problems of the world. And so that's a little bit about what we're going to talk about tonight. More specifically about Ashley's perspective of, of what she sees as some of the solutions out there. Uh, she's a number one best-selling author of Kiss Your Business and Keep It Simple, Sunshine. And also um, on a TV show, but I'm going to let her talk about, you know, her book, her success and her background and how actually together we are going to solve a lot of world's problems, right? Yes. Thanks, Bart. Surely we're not going to be solving a lot of problems of me on Facebook trying to figure out that technology. <laughs> You know, actually, I, I have to admit, I mean, I've always been worried about that as soon as we start linking other things, that this would suddenly you know, show up. But you're the first that <laughs> been able, successfully been able to do that. But that's cool. Don't worry about it. So yeah, tell, me, tell me about your book. I mean, what, why KISS? Okay, well, so why KISS was actually my husband came up with the title and it was one of those nights where I was I was kind of going out of my mind saying, what do we call it? Do we call it this? Do we call it that? And he, I just walked out to him and I said, do you have an idea? And he said, kiss, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, sunshine. And really, that's what this the book is about. It's about distilling 20 years of business experience down back to the only things that you really need to focus on, right? So, so what I see every single day, and I imagine that you see as well, is that people are either overwhelmed because there's so much to focus on that they don't know where to start, so they're doing this. Okay, I'll do a little bit of this, and then I'll go over there, and I'll focus over there, or they, they don't know where to start. So they're either doing too many things or they go into paralysis and they're not doing enough. There's so much uncertainty. There's so much feeling of fear of missing out, right? Especially with Facebook and all the social media of, oh, I need to be on everything at once. And that, and I know, I know we have a lot to talk about on this, but that in and of itself creates such stress and anxiety that we don't know enough, we don't have enough, we're not ready enough. And so the book is a, there are six things, focus on these six things and you'll be fine. So what are those six things? And oh, by the way, do you know what uh, FOMO means? Fear of missing out. Yeah, I just learned that the other day, brilliant. <laughs> I thought you were going to give me a new acronym for that fear of missing out. 
So, so um, well, let's talk a little bit about the fear of missing out. What, what is that about? That's a great question. And I would love to hear your thoughts on that. No, I'm interviewing you. You can't be asking me. <laughs> okay. All right. So fear of missing out. So there's been a really, a really interesting contrast that I've experienced in the past year. And that was this for, so I relocated back to the United States after 22 years in Australia. And the last six years that I was in Australia, I was living in a beautiful place. It was a, a national park. The beach was on one side, the bay was on the other side, there were trees everywhere, and it was really quite a, quite a simple life. It was one of these places where the kids after school didn't necessarily go running off to after school activities, they got on their bikes. They went to the beach, they went to the bay, they threw things out. And so their environment was one that was really conducive to being present, right? Where if there was any fear of missing out in that kind of environment, it's your, it's how could you have missed the sunset? The sunset was amazing tonight. What were you doing? It's like, this is where we live. Whereas here, so here, now I'm in San Diego and I could throw a ball. Well, my, my, my arm probably isn't that good. But there's a there's a Home Depot right there. There's a Target right there. There's a K, there's a Kmart right there. There's a Walmart right there. Within five minutes of driving, there is so much stuff. And everywhere you look, people are all on their devices. Now that's not a that's not actually a judgment because that is what it is. And there's a huge amount of value and benefit for the connectivity of that. And at the same time, what I see, and as the mother of a nine-year-old as well, who gets a lot of her information from these little programs, is that fear of missing out is that at any given moment, you can connect to anybody in the world. You can see what anybody's doing, what they have, what they're thinking about, and where are we now finding out what's important? What, what, is, what is it that's telling us this is what you need to think about. And this is what's important. And if you don't have this, then you're going to miss out. Yeah, I think I totally agree. And I think one of the challenges that we have today, and I kind of alluded to it in the beginning, is that, you know, with all this information, all this technology that we have, um, it's almost like most people have become very dependent on that. And so all this experience, world experience, if you will, is coming from outside. It's all external. And so at that point growing up, when you take kids, for example, and here in the United States, is by the time they hit high school, um, you know, they've been uh, exposed to 250,000 different uh, commercials on TV. So it's the, the marketing on regular you know, television that's, you know, educating if you will, our children, call it, call it what you want. I mean, any, any, anything that we learn is an education, good, bad, or indifference, that's not the point. So what happens then is that when there's such a dependency on everything that's outside of you, you're not depending on the internal experience. You're not finding what you talked about earlier is that presence, is that that internal derived experience, and then a decision as to, okay, who am I in this world? And I think when you're so dependent on the outside, you're always searching for what's meant to be inside. And so you, you're just scared of, of missing out because you're not connected with yourself. You're wanting to connect with yourself. You want it to have relationships with others, but you're always looking outside. And since that will never satisfy that challenge or that desire, you're always gonna look. The truth is, and again, you know why I like the idea of keep it simple, is you're really reflecting on an inward, you know, what, what makes a difference for you. There's a reason that Eastern philosophy, philosophy if you will, or cultures are very much into mindfulness. It's all about meditation. It's all about connection, you know, with the world and, and outside and inside as well. Yes. So, so are you familiar with Byron Katie? Uh, yes. 
She said something yesterday and it really resonated and it's, it's, it's about what you're saying now. And that is wisdom. Wisdom is available when you're still. Wisdom is, is it's, it's there, but wisdom is difficult to access when, when you've got you know, these and you're, you're juggling the phone and the iPad and, and this and the fear of missing out and the technology is, is the antithesis of the stillness. And I really, I really so, so agree with something that you're saying right now in terms of just seeing a child, seeing an eight-year-old to a nine-year-old and the fear of missing out. And there was no fear of missing out when she was chasing butterflies at eight. Yep. You know, and, and it's interesting too, is, you know, they've done studies, you know, on children today and, and I forget the exact number, but, um, you know, there's an extraordinarily low number of kids that are really interested in the environment. They just much sooner prefer to, you know, get on the video games or watch TV or on any of those things or get on Facebook um, because that's where they're looking for what it is that they would otherwise actually find if they were in the environment. But the other part, the other challenge too, of course, is that, you know, um, you know, whatever, you know, happiness is available to everyone as well as unhappiness, which right is available for everyone also what's not right. Mm -hmm. And the challenge today is that, um, because we're relying so much on the outside world to give us information, but we're also relying on them to give us opinions. And we're grasping like crazy on any kind of movement. I don't care what it is. And just, you know, for any listeners, just appreciate the fact that, you know, this is not a political forum. This is not a religious forum. You know, this is just a place where people can share their authentic, you know, uh, perspective of life, not right, not wrong or indifferent. And, and you can like it or dislike it and resonate or not. But the point of the matter is, is that, um, you know, when you're relying on, on these opinions from the outside and not making them yourself, um, it's a problem. And so, you know, a lot of the kids today are going to be challenged because in essence, there's an identity crisis. And, you know, how do we, you know, um, when you really like someone, for example, when you really like someone, you really connect with somebody. And um, we were talking about this the other day. You know, people like people like themselves. And so when you have a lot of respect for somebody that's very, very successful, and, and quite frankly, you never know all the parts of what created that or helped that person become successful. But here's a person that's successful. I like that person. And so then, unfortunately, what you can do as well is take on their views, take on their opinions, even though you don't haven't really thought about them. And that's a big challenge today in our world as well, because people are making all sorts of statements and they have no clue what they're talking about. And so that's another reason for this platform is really to start having those conversations, these real, you know, opinions that are backed up by either experience mm -hmm. or facts, you know, none of this, you know, um, trying to mislead others or none of this trying to impose other people's views on other people. You know, I mean, you may have things that I totally disagree with. Great. Awesome. You know, it's my opportunity actually to be able to learn something from you. And, and, and I'm doing too much talking. You're supposed to be doing talking. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a great coach. Well, actually, I'm trying to catch up because you were talking so much beforehand because <laughs> You have this excuse that you're a woman and you haven't reached your quota of words for the day. <laughs> and I hang around women all the time as a plastic surgeon, so I'm, I'm used to that. And so I have to reach my quota. No, just kidding. So getting back to your book, let's talk about that for a moment. You know, you were talking about six uh, simple you know, steps. You know, what are they? Yeah, actually, actually, before we go there, I just, I can't leave this un, unfinished. I uh -oh. would really love, so this, this is what I love. A couple of things that you just said, right? And, and some of it is how we rely on other people to tell us what to think. And 
I was just having this conversation today, so it's perfect. So you can look at two things, right? And you can say, there's a problem, right? There's a problem. And you will find all of the reasons to say, yes, there absolutely is a problem. Yep. This isn't working. This isn't going well. Or you can say, there's no problem. There's absolutely no problem. There might be a little bit of a snag, we can call it that, but it's not a problem. And both can be completely true. Neither, both of them are completely an illusion. There's a problem, there's no problem. It's not like, give me a cup of problem, you know, let's go find, let's go get a bag of problem today at the grocery store. So this informing of what we need to think about, number one, right? What are we thinking about and why is it a problem? One of the things that was really interesting about living in the U.S. or being, being from the U.S. and then living in Australia is that when there would be an issue, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, it's what is, what is, what is one piece of technology say? Like what does a U.S. thing say? What does an Australian thing say? And then how do we then decide as individuals or sovereign beings what we are occupying our attention with. You know, when we wake up at three o'clock in the morning, what are we thinking about? If we're worrying about things that we don't have direct knowledge of, then where are those things coming at us from? And I, I see this a lot where people are coming in and they're really worried or they're really concerned about something, yet they're concerned about something that they actually don't have any real direct experience of. Right, because they've read it on Facebook or they've seen it on on television, and because they've seen it, they start worrying about it. But they don't actually know whether it's true, and they don't have any direct experience of it. Right. So, and it beautifully, this also goes back to the six wisdoms of of the book, which are also applicable to life. So you see, I, I, I'm answering the question. Perfect. And if there was only one, one chapter, which is the most important one, and it's one that you are very, very familiar with in all of your work, is the first question is, what do you want? Oh. You know, what, what does a great life look like to you, a great business, knowing that there's no separation, right? No silo. The compartmentalization thing doesn't work. It's as equally unsuccessful as the multitasking that you talked about earlier. That's unsuccessful. Compartmentalizing, which a lot of, it's usually a guy thing, right? Guys say, well, I'm great at compartmentalizing. No. What's going on in one area of your life is going to be affecting another area of your life. So the number one thing is, what do you really want? What does it look like? What's the picture look like? Not just of your business or of your relationship or of your health, but what is it all about? How do you want to sleep at night? How do you want to wake up in the morning? If you woke up every morning like a kid going, oh, I got another day today, yay! What are the ingredients for that? And that's where this, and and that that's what I mean about the simplific, simplification of the book is that when people get into the business realm, they can often get into this very highbrow. Oh, let's talk about you know, profits and losses, and that's important. I'm not saying that's not important, but let's start with: Do you want to have fun? Do you want to have a great life? And if you do, and you're going into business, then what's it going to take? You know, and then we get into the other things that are about business of, of where are you and where do you want to go? And again, parallels to life. And how do you do it in a way that's authentic and, and in integrity so that at the end of the night, you're sleeping well. And you're saying, I stand by my word, I stand by my action, I stand by my thoughts. It's sort of like, you know, Lady Gaga said the other day, and um, I have a new newfound respect for, for this lady, which I didn't care for much before. But then again, just like, like you were saying earlier, I just didn't know. I didn't know who she really was. And, you know, she says that let's go deep. 
and basically you're saying the same thing in a sense. And because, you know, she likes going to bed with herself every night. And it's it's sort of the same thing. You've, you're going to want to like yourself, going to want to love yourself. And, and what does that person have in life? They have happiness. They have fun. They have excitement. They have discovery. They have all of these things that, you know, we once experienced when we were little kids, you know, maybe in kindergarten. You know, and that's where we learned a lot of things, as you were sharing with me earlier on. You know, there's a great book about that as well, yeah. that all you need to do it now is what you learned in kindergarten. And there's probably a lot of truth in that because we just overcomplicate everything. And when you just narrow it down, just make it very simple. What is it that I want? Not what I should want, what, not what, you know, everybody else has obligated me to think and believe and, and desire and everything else just to make them happy. You know, and, and I think the challenge that a lot of people have is that they don't go that deep and, and because they, they're scared of that deepness. They're, um, you know, because it actually is a lot simpler once you get rid of all the stuff, the noise around it, and kind of find out what is it that you like. And, you know, there's that fear that, you know, we will be rejected if we like something that somebody else doesn't like. Well, great. That means that that person shouldn't be in our life, you know, and so there's so many masks and fears and those kinds of things. But when you can, you know, work through that stuff, find out what you really want, really, as I like to put it, yeah. and finding out who you are, you know, what is your identity? Right. You no, know, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter who you become. The only comparison that's relevant then is how you compare yourself with your past. Where you've grown over the years versus comparing yourself with the Joneses and the Smiths and wondering if you're just as good as them. You know, if you're just comparing yourself with everyone else, you're never going to make it. If you compare yourself with yourself and your own success, as you were mentioning earlier, you know, what is real success? And so I love your book. I, th I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so while you were saying this, the, this, what do you really want? When I graduated from college, I moved to the British Virgin Islands in the Caribbean. And my older sister was incensed because she said, you're not allowed to do that. You've just spent five years in college and I did got a journalism marketing, marketing degree. Now you have to go get a job. You know, now this is what normal people do. You go and you get a job and then you, you get married and you have children. And she had all the rules. And so when I said, well, there are no jobs right now at the moment, there's a recession. So I'm going to go to the Caribbean and sail on boats. It was like, no, short circuiting. No, you, you don't get to do that until you're old. That's what old people do. They retire and then they get to go and have a really great life. And I always thought, well, that's just, doesn't make any sense you know why would I why would I wait why I mean why would I wait tables now and in in my life I've had people say what it's like you throw the ball over the fence and then you figure out how to get it I remember getting a job once at a at a global company and I thought it doesn't really work for me at the moment to work five days a week I'm still going to do the job I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to smash goals and I'm going to I'm going to be one of the best that they've ever seen, if not the best. But I, right now at the moment, to work five days a week, it doesn't really work. So I went and I created a proposal and said, this is the proposal. This is what I would like to offer you. These are, the, these are my KPIs, my key performance indicators. And this is how I propose that I'm going to deliver these. And they said, okay, that sounds good. And people were like, no. No, that doesn't work like that. And this is one of the things that when I'm working with clients that I want to break is whose rules are you living by? Who put these rules into place that say you should do this? And if you hear the word should in your language, well, let's blast that out of the park because right. that's coming from childhood somewhere and there's some shame going on. But, you know, why not live your life by your rules? As, as if you're if you're coming from a place where you're in your heart, you're connected to the greater good. We need to really question who put the rules in place and 
let's do we need to keep buying into them do they have to be ours and i think it's enormously liberating to be able to go back to the place of saying actually life can be a ton of fun you can actually recreate the rules maybe not all of them but enough of them so that certainly if you are believing that you can create your own life but let's simplify it let's take it back Let's get back in the sandbox, you know, yep. and figure out who you want in the sandbox with you and what your sandbox looks like. Absolutely. And actually, you know what? Uh, same level of thinking as I have. There's a reason why this show is called Prescription for Your Transformation. You know, by whose prescription are you living your life? Is it yours or someone else's? And this is that opportunity very specifically to be able to tap into a new way of life, a way of life that you design on your terms, and one that's going to give you all the joy and fulfillment and happiness that that you desire. And and you know the key you know part to all of this, and again the reason for this platform, and I'm very grateful um, to be talking to you tonight. And I know we do have to wrap it up uh, uh, shortly, and very shortly actually, is um, the big challenge that you know and this is my personal experience too is is you don't know what you don't know it's what you don't know that you don't know that's going to make the shift that's going to make the difference in your life and so having this this desire to actually keep on looking and finding new solutions not disregarding things that are potentially working that you just have to give them a little more time to make it work i mean this big story about you're only two feet away from the the gold mine but really understanding what's going on Understanding, you know, what's the your alignment of your beliefs and your values, what's what's happening in, in round in, in around in life. Asking the question, you know, what's really true here and, and what is it that I really want? And so I really want to thank you tonight, Ashley. Um, you know, you have an incredible background, um, from several different continents and different fields. Now you're from a phenomenal coach with an amazing company, which is the Robbins Research International. So they're very lucky to have you as a coach. And uh, I certainly look forward to having some more conversations with you online and as well offline. Um, I also invited you to come to New Zealand, by the way. We're, we're working on an incredible trip for transformational leaders in New Zealand with Live Your Life, uh, uh, Live Your List uh, Productions. It's a great, great program. But the point of the matter is this, is that I'd like to invite you back. Let's have more conversations about this. I think these conversations are relevant. Yes, they're your opinions, they're my opinions, and anybody else that we have on this platform is their opinions as well. And that's the whole point, because it's not yes, but, it's always yes, and. It's always an and here, and it can be this, and it can be that. I mean, people who have more choices in life, those are people that actually have more choices. I mean, people that have more happiness in life, I'm sorry, you know, they have more choices. And so the more choices that we can offer people, especially with people like yourself, different perspectives, you know, best-selling books, being on the program, uh, what's that coach series again? Uh, Commando coach. coach. The Commando Coach, yeah. So some parting wise words from Ashley Good Healing, celebrity coach. Parting wise words. Parting wise words are start with the smile on your face and your heart. Go back to the basics. I mean, remember what it was like when you were a kid and you were so excited. You know, what were the dreams? And if you ever gave up on your dreams, then, oh, what's it going to take to bring them back? I love this platform. I'm so grateful to you. Thank you very much. And thank what we were talking about earlier, it's just, you know, the more that we have these conversations and the more that we are connecting the dots and really saying, yes, absolutely, it is possible. It's so possible, the more it's going to happen. Awesome. And so uh, at this juncture, I'm going to offer an invitation to three dear friends of ours, Leah, Heather, and Heidi. They know who they are to come together and let's have a really cool conversation about a topic 
that's really important. And we'll keep that a mystery for now. Ashley, thank you so much. God bless. It's you're a, you're an angel, and I'm looking forward to many more um, talks with you. So, uh, me too. Thank you so much. It's been fun and amazing. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you.